everyone. I'm Vern Lawrence, and welcome to Mosaic Church in the Nazarene. It's Wednesday, October the 21st, and today Jeff Lee will be sharing with us from the book of Matthew titled, The Bee Attitudes. So please join us now and be blessed with their favorite hymns and songs to glorify the Lord. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save our wretch like me I heard about his glory Of his precious blood suffering
If you would, turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 5. We're going to read a good portion of this as today's message is titled, The Beatitudes. You've probably heard this before. Now, I've never found the word Beatitudes in the Bible, but what it means and what it is, is the eight sayings of Jesus, sometimes people call it nine sayings of Jesus, at the beginning of the sermon of, of his Sermon on the Mount, the very famous Sermon of the Mount, and Beatitudes is very famous also. So it's the eight sayings of Jesus, beginning at the Sermon on the Mount. The word Beatitudes, that comes from the, uh, the word in Latin, which I'm going to pronounce Beatus, B-E-A-T-U-S, meaning blessed, which each of the Beatitudes starts with. So it begins with the word blessed. So what I'd like to do today is read through the Beatitudes and then break each one down. We'll, we'll make it quickly. I, I won't drag this on forever. But as we read the Beatitudes, sometimes we'll attribute them to just natural things when there's also a very, a very spiritual meaning behind the Beatitudes also. So let's start in Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, when Jesus seen the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And Jesus opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my namesake, for Jesus' namesake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. These are the Beatitudes. And I like to think of them of as how we should be. This is, this is like the mark for Christians to achieve to, the Beatitudes. Uh, the Greek word translated blessing or blessed means happy or blissful. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus used the word to refer to more than a superficial happiness. In this context, blessed refers to a state of spiritual well-being and prosperity. There's our spiritual aspect. When we read these things, we tend to relate them automatically to the natural, but there's a very spiritual aspect to these also. Those who first experience the first as aspect of a beatitude, uh, say like the, the poor, uh, you know, if, if you're poor, if, if you mourn, if you're meek, if you're hungry, if you're hunger for righteousness, if you're merciful, you're, if you're pure, if you're a peacemaker, they'll also experience the second aspect of the beatitude, being uh, yours is the kingdom of heaven, you'll be comforted, you'll inherit the earth, you'll be filled, uh, you'll have mercy, you'll see God, you'll be called the sons of God. The blessed have a share in salvation and have entered the kingdom of God, experiencing a foretaste of heaven. Another possible rendering of the beginning of each beatitude is the blessedness. The blessedness. The beatitudes, once again, may describe the ideal disciple. Now, we all have our faults, and we are all working towards being the ideal disciple. Peter, James, Paul, John, they were all working toward being the ideal. Nobody made it. Nobody made it. But once we see him, as we pass on to the next life, once we see him, we'll be like him. Because we'll see him as he is, and we will know him to the fullness. So, but as for right now, we're working towards being the ideal disciple, both present and future. The person whom Jesus describes in this passage is a different quality, a, a different quality of character and lifestyles than those who are still outside the kingdom. 
So the Beatitudes relates to someone who is working out their salvation with fear and trembling. If we go back to the first Beatitude, we'll start with the first one. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What is the poor in spirit? What does that mean? A possible translation, I won't give you every translation because we can derive a lot of things out of this, but with the phrase poor in spirit, Jesus was most likely speaking of our spiritual condition of poverty, the recognition of our need for God. The kingdom of heaven refers to the people who acknowledge God as their king. So to paraphrase this, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If we were to paraphrase that, it might go something like, Blessed are those who humbly recognize their need for God, for they will enter into His kingdom. Isn't that nice? A little bit easier to understand that way. Those who mourn. Blessed are those who mourn. The second beatitude. I'm going to stop numbering them right now because I'm going to forget where I'm at and I'm going to have to go back and figure out the numbers, so let's just go one by one. The next beatitude, I'm going to call it that one. The next beatitude. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Now, naturally, my mind, the natural mind, is thinking those who mourn will, people who may may be mourning for past on loved ones, mourning for someone sick, mourning for the troubles that this world gives us. But here's another aspect of that. Those who mourn speaks of those who may be expressing deep sorrow over sin. Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Remember the guy that smote his breast and wouldn't so much as look up to heaven? Because have mercy on me, a sinner. Where the Pharisee, on the other hand, I'm glad I'm not like these other sinners are. No, this is a person, blessed are those who mourn. This is a person who expresses deep sorrow over sin or those who repent from their sin. The freedom found in the forgiveness of sins and the joy, eternal salvation is the comfort of those who repent. So, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Let's paraphrase that as, blessed are those who mourn for their sins, for they shall receive forgiveness and life eternal. You know what else that comfort can refer to? The Holy Spirit. Isn't he referred to as the comforter? If you mourn over your sin, if you repent from your sins, what happens? you receive the Holy Spirit. You become a child of God. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. What is this? What is the meekness? We know that Jesus was described as meek and humble, but what is it to be meek? Sometimes we correlate or recognize meek with weak, which is an extreme mistake. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Similar to the poor, the meek are those who submit to God's authority, making Him Lord. Revelation 21.7 says that God's children will inherit all things. Blessed are the meek, for they will what? Inherit the earth. Another one, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Hunger and thirst speaks of a deep need, possibly a driving passion. This righteousness first refers to the Lord Jesus Christ, our righteousness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You know what our righteousness is? In the sight of God, filthy rags, filthy rags. It's Jesus who becomes our righteousness as we accept him. That's the righteousness we're talking about here. Blessed are, I lost my place here. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Hunger and thirst speaks of a deep and driving passion. The righteousness refers to the Lord Jesus Christ. Our righteousness to be filled is the satisfaction of the soul's desire. So to paraphrase, blessed are those who passionately long for the Lord Jesus Christ. 
for he will satisfy their souls. I like that one. I like that one. Let's go on to the next one. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. I think this one, this one almost kind of speaks for itself because it has, a very, it has a spiritual tone to it and also has a natural tone. Simply put, we sow and then we reap. We reap what we sow. Those who demonstrate mercy will receive mercy. Likewise, those who know great mercy, if you're just a little bit righteous, you're going to show great mercy to those around you. The mercy is shown through forgiveness and also by offering kindness and compassion toward others. If we were to paraphrase this, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Mercy. The paraphrase could sound like, blessed are those who show mercy through forgiveness, kindness, and compassion, for they will receive mercy. What a wonderful thing. Be merciful. Let's work toward being the perfect disciple. The pure in heart are those who've been cleansed from within. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped, I skipped ahead on you. Blessed are the next one, the next one. The bless, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. The pure in heart are those who've been cleansed from within. This is not talking about the outward righteousness seen by men, but inward holiness that only God can see. The Bible says in Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 14, that without holiness, no man will see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So if we were to paraphrase that, if we were to put that in other words, blessed are those who've been purified from the inside out, being made clean and holy, for they will see God. Isn't that wonderful? How about the next one? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Are you a peacemaker? I think this one also has a spiritual aspect and a natural aspect. Are you a person that may go run around stirring up strife? Are you making outrageous statements that inflame others? That's not being a peacemaker. But are you rather one who wants to keep the peace? Who wants to be peaceful with all men so that you may win others to Christ? Not by your outrageous statements. Not by stirring up strife. Blessed are the peacemakers. The Bible says we have peace through God or through Jesus Christ. Reconciliation through Jesus brings restored fellowship, peace with God. In 2 Corinthians 5.19, it says, God entrusts us with the same message of reconciliation to do what? To take to others. Be a peacemaker. If we were to paraphrase that, blessed are Blessed are those who have been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ and who bring the same message of reconciliation to others, bringing peace. All those who have peace with God are called His sons. Hallelujah! Being called the Son of God as we are brought into His family. Ready for the next one? This is getting good. I like this. I like breaking this down. Seeing what it says in the Word and making it come alive for us that we can apply it today. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Just as Jesus faced... Per now persecution, let's define this. Persecution, oh I'm a Christian and everybody at work talks bad about me when I'm not around. Eh, I suppose if persecution was like this big, that might be persecution. But what type of persecution did the disciples face? What type of persecution did the missionaries out in the field, what did they face? Death, harm, destruction. This is the persecution. Let me find out where I was. That's the problem. When, when I stopped to talk, I just lose everything, and I didn't put good paragraphs in here.
Jesus faced persecution so that he promised his followers persecution. If they hated me, guess what? They're going to hate you as well. Those who endure because of their faith, rather than hiding their righteousness to avoid persecution, not somebody talking about you, but someone coming after your life. Those who endure because of their faith, rather than hiding their righteousness to avoid persecution, are genuine followers of Christ. So if we were to paraphrase, if we were to paraphrase, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, Blessed are those daring enough op to live openly for righteousness and suffer persecution, for they will receive the kingdom of heaven. That was the Beatitudes. I want to read through those again quickly so that you can kind of comprehend everything that we've covered. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted, persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I hope this has opened up a little bit more of the Beatitudes to you. We learned this as we were kids. We've heard it a lot of times. We sometimes didn't know what it meant. I never found the word, as I mentioned before, the Beatitudes in the Bible. But it means to be blessed or blessedness. And I pray that this word would live in your heart that you would work toward, as we all should, being the ideal disciple. These are the things that we need to attain to as we live through this life until we come to be with the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, Lord God. We pray that it would live in our hearts so that we would bring forth the fruits of righteousness, Lord God, that would bring glory to your name in all that we do. And we pray that you would allow us to share that good news with others around us so that your name would be glorified. We thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Brother Jeff, and thank you for tuning in to our midweek service. If you have been blessed today by today's message and you are watching us on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be notified of our future videos. If you would like to support this ministry with your offerings or donations, please send them to the Mosaic Church of the Nazarene, 8499 North Dort Highway, Mount Morris, Michigan, 48458. We will be continuing our in-person services and would love to have you join us and find us right here across from Skateland on Dort Highway every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. We pray the Lord will bless you so that you then will become a blessing to others.